Right, now we come to our final category for this evening. This year's Allen's Billy Hyde Graham Bell Hall of Fame inductee. I would now like to welcome Mr Con Gallen of Allen's Billy Hyde to the stage as well as Minister Christopher Pine to assist in handing out this year's award. The winner of the Hall of Fame award this evening is Graham Lyle. I would like to um, tell you a little bit about Graham Lyle, if I may. Graham uh, began his professional music career at the age of 17 years old. In 1971, Graham was composing, arranging, recording and producing at Armstrong Studios in Melbourne. He became a member of the ABC show band for three years as well. In 1977, he was director of music at Channel 9 uh, and the Don Lane Show. In the mid-80s, Graham left full-time television to concentrate on teaching. He returned for special events including the AFL-NRL Grand Finals, Carols by Candlelight and the Logie Awards. Since 1992, Graham has taught at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, the Victorian College of the Arts, uh, WA Academy of Performing Arts, as well as performing, writing, arranging, teaching at the WA Academy of Performing Arts. In 2003, Graham was awarded a member of the Order of Australia. He currently lives and teaches in Mount Gambier and is a director of studies at the James Morrison Academy of Music. So if Graham's here, I think uh, it's a good time to say hello. Well, what do you say? Uh, it's very humbling and I'm really honoured when I look around the room and see so many musicians who I've had the privilege and the honour of playing with over the years. It's, uh, it just really touches me here. But there's many people who've been very important in my life. I remember at the age of 18, driving to Sydney in my Triumph Herald and going along to a place called the Sky Lounge. And there I heard for the first time Don Burroughs. And Don sort of became my Sydney father. We used to do a few gigs together and I'd go back to his place in San Susi and we'd play clarinet duets till four in the morning after a bite of wheat biscuits and a cup of tea, of course. Don being Don. Incidentally, it, when I was 18, I went to a place called the El Rocco, and there was a group there called the Three Out Trio, which was Mike Nock, Freddie Logan, and Chris Caron. And I had the, I think it was my first sitting at the El Rocco with that group. So thank you, Mike, for letting me sit in all those years ago. But I have had uh, many accolades over the years for arranging. But what you don't know is how I started and why I got into arranging. I had no interest in arranging. I always wanted to be a gun tenor saxophone player, and that was it. Until I got a gig at the Quo Artist Nightclub which had an eight-piece band. It was quite good. And trumpet, alto, tenor, trombone, baritone, piano, bass, drums, like the old Dave Pell octet. The trombone player was from Melbourne, Billy Weston, who was a wonderful arranger and was a staff arranger at GTV9. And he said to me, have you ever thought of arranging? I said, no. He said, you should think about it. He said, it's really rewarding. I said, oh, OK. So I went home and I transcribed Benny Golson's arrangement of Whisper Knot. And I did it for an eight-piece band and I took it in and we played it. And of course, it was sensational. It was Benny Golson's writing. So Billy Weston, big mouth that he was, went up to Tommy Tico, who was musical director of Channel 7, he said, Tommy, you've got to hear this kid from Melbourne. He's unbelievable. And uh, 
So Tommy rang me and uh, he said, I want you to do this arrangement. He was a Hungarian gypsy, I won't, so I won't do any more. It's for five saxophones, doubling flute, clarinet, bassoon, oboe, bass, clarinet, two French horns, three trumpets, three trombones, tuba, harp, strings, and a 16-voice choir. <laughs> so I hot-footed into Hall's bookstore in Pitt Street, Sydney, and bought the Cecil Forsyth Book of Orchestration. And I read it all night. And I started on the next day and I finished the chart and I took it in. And this was on Studio 61, I think, Channel 7 in Sydney. And we started and he played it through and it was dreadful. I did what every young arranger does, forgot to put accidentals in for a start. And uh, Tommy looked at me and then he looked at the orchestra and said, take a break. One hour later, he called them back in because he'd spent the whole hour fixing up my mistakes. And I thought, well, thanks very much, Tommy. That's the end of, I think I'll just continue playing. And I've walked out and he said, wait a minute. He said, next week, I want you to do this. So I am the only person in this country who learned to arrange on national television. <laughs> so I kept going and uh, I stayed in Sydney for a while and then you sort of know the rest because I've just bummed around for a while. And, but I'd like to particularly thank some of my dearest friends, Joe, for a start, Paul Grabowski, who has been my hero for a long time, Tony Gould, who's had to go and do a gig, the selfish old bugger he is. Um, and Mike, who we taught together at the Sydney Con, and every musician and every student I've had who has taught me so much too about music and life. Thank you very much. Oh, before I do that, there's one very special person who is a jazz widow a lot of the time. And it's my wife Marlene, who is fortunately is here with me tonight, and has been my backbone for the last 20 or odd years. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you.